it's Laura from The Green Giraffe Eats, and as I promised, I am about to teach you how to make my chocolate chip cookies. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are at my baking counter, and we're going to be using my KitchenAid stand mixer. If you do not have a KitchenAid, it's not a problem. You could also use a hand mixer to do this. I've never really tried to make chocolate chip cookies by hand with just a spoon in a bowl, but it probably can be done. So let's get started. My recipe starts with three quarters of a cup of unsalted room temperature butter. So that is one and a half sticks. Now I always use unsalted butter in my baking. Um, unsalted butter is generally fresher. Um, a lot of dairies will add butter to salt to prolong its shelf life. So I always like to use unsalted butter because it's fresher. And I also like to because you can control the salt content of your baked goods. So not all salted butters are created equally. So you might end up with like a saltier or a less salty butter. And this way you can control the amount of salt. So I always use unsalted butter. So we start with one and a half sticks. And then I pre-measured most of my ingredients. We have one cup of packed brown sugar. You wanna make sure that's nice and tightly packed and one quarter cup of granulated white sugar. Okay, and we're going to beat this on low and then we're gonna crank it up to medium until it gets nice and light and airy. Okay, we're gonna um, lift our stand mixer, or depending if you have a different kind, you might need to lower it. You're gonna scrape down the sides. Now, mine is only shaking a lot because I have it on this um, slider that I use. Um, so normally they don't shake this much, but I have it elevated kind of on a lift right now. So if you're wondering why it's shaking, that's why. So then we're gonna scrape the sides down, and then you're gonna beat it again. Okay. Okay, this is looking really beautiful right now. What this is doing is creaming together the sugar and the butter, okay? And if I'm baking with my kids, which I do all the time, this is the stage when I allow them to taste the batter. Um, I don't do it after there's raw egg in at a later stage, so if they wanna do a taste test, this is the time that I let them do it. So if you're baking with your kids, now's the time to let them get a spoon or a fingerful, however you wanna do it at your house, and they can taste it, okay? But next, we're gonna be adding in an egg and vanilla. So after this point, no more tasting. So when I add eggs to any of my dishes, I always crack into a different vessel first, okay? This way you'll prevent getting any eggshells into your finished product. If there was an eggshell, you'd be able to get it out in the separate bowl. So we're gonna add in one egg. And I'd like to note that my egg, along with my butter, was at room temperature. I pulled my butter and egg out at the same time. When you use room temperature ingredients, your cookies will come together much more smoothly and consistently. So I always say use room temperature eggs. Okay, so we're adding one egg and one and a half teaspoons of pure vanilla extract. Okay, I pre-measure that. I always use pure vanilla extract. If you don't have any, it's not the end of the world. You can still make delicious cookies. So if you have invitation, go ahead and use it. But if you have it, you have the real deal, go for it. It's gonna make those cookies taste that much better. So we're gonna go ahead and mix these in and we're gonna incorporate some more air 
We're gonna put this in high. You'll notice the volume increase and it'll become a more pale, kind of yellowish color. down the sides again make sure we're getting all of it incorporated really really well and then we're going to beat it again Okay, great. I'm gonna open this up again. You can see it's a little bit fluffier. The color has lightened a little bit and that's exactly what you're looking for. So we're getting close, we're almost done. And I love this spatula. It's a special one that helps scrape the actual blade. It's made by KitchenAid and it's, um, it's just amazing. You can scrape the blade off or the paddle attachment. Isn't that nice? Look how beautiful they got. Okay, so next we'll be adding in our dry ingredients. I pre-measured two cups of all-purpose flour. Make sure when you're measuring your flour, you're not pressing that measuring cup against the side of the bin or the bag. You're going to do with a scoop and sweep method. Okay, you're gonna add flour, a half a teaspoon of just regular table salt. In a lot of my actual cooking, I use kosher salt, but when I bake, I use just table, granulated table salt, excuse me and then one teaspoon of baking soda, okay? So those are our dry ingredients. We're gonna add those all at once into our bowl, okay? Beautiful. We're gonna give that a nice mix. scraped on the side. Sometimes it incorporates by itself, sometimes it doesn't. It just kind of depends. So we're going to give it a nice little scrape. There we go. Cookies aren't really science. You just kind of have to feel it. Oh, it was looking a little crumbly. I need to help it out by scraping down the sides. And you'll see it's starting to come together. You'll see that crumb coming together. And that is perfect. That's exactly what you're looking for, okay? It doesn't need to be one big solid mass yet or really at all. And then the last phase is adding in chocolate chips. These are semi-sweet chocolate chips. I always bake with semi-sweet. I think personally that if I use milk chocolate, it tastes a little bit too sweet. So I always recommend semi-sweet, but if you have a preference for like a white chocolate chip or um, a dark chocolate chip, you could even do like butterscotch chips or peanut butter chips. There's all kinds of different chips available. So one and a half cups. We'll go right in. I like them extra chocolatey. You could do mini chips too. Um, it just, it's not as like, it's still chocolatey, but for some reason it's like distributed more differently. Um, my kids always prefer the bigger pieces or the chunks. I don't know why. I'm just gonna turn that around a couple of times. It can be a lot of work for your KitchenAid mixer. Um, I have two of these bad boys and one of them I had overused it. I was doing a huge holiday baking several years ago, and I actually went through one of my motors, and I had to have it fixed. But it's okay. It's working still. These KitchenAids can take a lot, but sometimes you can overwork them. Haven't had a problem since. So here is our dough. It's looking gorgeous. That's what you want. That's your cookie dough. Now we're going to scoop our dough onto a parchment-lined baking sheet. I'm going to push this out of the way so you can see it. Oopsie doopsie. There we go. 
Um, I always bake with parchment paper. If you don't have parchment paper, it's okay. You do not need to grease your um, pan, but I just think it comes up a lot nicer. So parchment paper, a nice flat piece. And I bake mine, or I scoop mine. This is the scoop I use, and it's a little under an ounce. Um, you can do whatever size cookie you want. You just need to be very cautious about how long you're cooking it. So if it's a bigger cookie, it's going to have to cook longer. If it's a smaller cookie, you're going to have to cook it less. So you're just going to have to check it a lot when it's baking. So you're going to fill whatever you're scooping with and then pop it onto the tray. Okay. And I do about 8 to 10 on a tray. I like to give them room to spread. I don't try to overcrowd the tray. Just do extra trays. I'm only going to bake one tray today. Um, and then the rest I'm going to refrigerate so that I can bake some more for my chocolate chip cookie ice cream sandwiches that we're making on Friday. So this, this you can refrigerate for, I would say, up to like four or five days. And then you can also freeze dough balls, which I do all the time. You freeze them individually, like on a tray like this. You would put that in the freezer, let them freeze solid, and then you can pop them into um, a freezer, say a Ziploc bag or Tupperware, and you can thaw those and have chocolate chip cookies anytime. So I do that a lot too. So I'm just going to do eight on this tray. Turn it over here. And another trick I like to do, I don't always do it, but sometimes I do, is I will take sea salt and I'll put a couple of flakes of sea salt on top of every cookie. And that is super delicious. Um, I'm not going to do it today because I'm actually out of sea salt, but if you have it, it's super delicious. And then you're going to bake these in a preheated 375 degree oven for 10 to 12 minutes. Now, if they're a little bit bigger, it might be closer to like 14 minutes. If they're a little bit smaller, it might be closer to eight or nine minutes. So we'll come back after these um, come out of the oven. I'll show you what they look like. Okay, so my timer is going off and it's, 10, it's been 10 minutes and they're actually not ready yet, but I wanted to give you a, a little view of them. They are still, I hope you can see this, a little bit too light and they haven't spread quite enough. So we're gonna go for two more minutes and then we will check back. Okay, so these came out at 13 minutes. They took three more minutes and they are perfect. They're slightly browned around the edges. There's some a little bit of cracks in the middle and they're still soft and setting up. So you're gonna leave them on the tray for five to 10 more minutes before removing them. And I also wanted to show you what I do when I'm going to freeze or refrigerate extra dough. So this I'm gonna be cooking probably Thursday night for our cookie show, our ice cream sandwich cookie show on Friday. And I just scoop them and I put them on a small tray. And this is lined with wax paper. Make sure not to bake on wax paper, only bake on parchment paper. But if you're just putting them in the refrigerator or freezer, I use wax paper. So then I'll put these in a Tupperware container and put them in the refrigerator. Or if you're going to put them in the freezer, just make sure that it's an airtight container or a Ziploc bag. And then I'm just going to leave them out for about 30 to 40 minutes until they're closer to room temperature before I bake them on Friday. And if you're doing them from the freezer, make sure you're going to... Um, I would thaw them for probably close to two hours to make sure they're up to room temperature. So if they're coming from the refrigerator, 30 minutes to an hour. If they're coming from the freezer, closer to two hours. Let them thaw and then bake them. So I know I said I'd let these set up on the tray a little bit longer, but I do want to show you one at the end here. So it's been sitting on the tray for, mm, it's been five minutes since I took them out. So here is our beautiful Chocolate chip cookie. Mmm. Mmm. That's delicious. My kids are going to be so excited. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope to see you on Friday on Facebook Live.